For this video, I'm going to take this Azure Databricks notebook example, which is written in Scala, and I'm going to convert this into ADF using mapping data flows. So this is an ETL example. This is meant to be extracting uh, um, data from a, a JSON file. It has uh, some radio playlists on it, and then it takes that JSON file and um, selects a few columns from there, renames some things, creates a projection, and then imports that data in those columns into Azure SQL Data Warehouse. So I'm going to show you how to do this in ADF using mapping data flows. So the first thing is that the data is acquired here with a wget, uh, and then that uh, file, the JSON file, is captured uh, here, and then it is stored in this location on the um, Databricks file system. So we'll skip this part. So this is um, assuming that we already have acquired that file. And in EDF, this would just be a definition of a data set with a link service, the link service having your credentials and the data set pointing to the location of that file. And we'll acquire the schema from that process. Here, when you're working in Databricks and you're writing in a notebook uh, ETL code, uh, then you uh, read the file in through the uh, JSON reader here. Um, and you'll get the um, all of the columns from that uh, file. And so you can see that here in a preview within Notebook as you do cell-by-cell uh, -cell operations. But then what you have to do is you have to set your projection here by selecting the columns that you want. So we'll do this as well. We're not going to take everything in. Uh, we want the samples to pretty much match up as close as possible. So we're going to take first name, last name, gender, location, and level. And then we rename level to subscription type. So I want to take this and I want to copy it to my clipboard so I can do this as well on my data flow. So I want to change level to subscription type. We take a look at the data, we browse the data, explore it, and that's pretty much it. And then we load it into Azure Data Warehouse. This should be very simple and pretty quick in Data Factory. So let's go over to Data Factory and I have a blank pipeline canvas. I'll add my data flow and I will create a new data flow, uh, mapping data flow. And so we can call this um, notebook and this is a Scala ETL. There we go. Very good. And so we'll add that source, that source being the JSON file. So I already have that here, JSON radio. And I'll show you that definition. All you need to do is to point to that location in your blob store or ADLS, wherever you happen to have stored. And then you import that schema. So now we have the column names. We have all the information now stored within Data Factory. Next, I can do in the pipeline is I'll do those selects so we can set the right projection that we want for this file here through this transformation. Now, all of this, all of that metadata about the file comes in directly into um, Data Factory without you needing to do any coding or any work there. In fact, I haven't written anything at all yet. I've just been pointing and clicking my entire way through this. So I'm going to take all these extraneous fields. We just went to the level. And this is actually what we're changing. So let me paste that in here, changing the subscription type. Uh, location, first name, last name, gender, and length. And I'm going to rearrange these so that we have the same ordering. Let me go back to that tutorial. And the columns are uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. first, last, gender, location, level. So first, again, all drag and drop, last location, level, gender, and length. We had that's wrong. We don't need those. Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry. Gender is before location. Level goes last. Gender before location. Level, so we don't need length. Okay, so I'll take that out. That should be good enough. Uh, now, let's go ahead and do the sync. So this is about to land the data into Data Warehouse. There we go. Boom. I should have a... Um, Let's see, I think we already have a data set defined. Yes, new radio table. So you need a data set defining now the landing spot. This I think is going to be a new radio table. I'll show you that. You have your connection with your credentials and link service to that um, data warehouse, to that database. And then for the table, what we're going to do here is we will just create a new table called radio. There isn't one that exists there yet. Um, So then I go over to my management studio, you'll see that on that data warehouse there is no radio table yet. So we're going to have ADF create that for us based on the schema of this data coming in from the JSON file. All right, so let's go back to it. 
Since this is a new table, uh, we're creating on the fly, the mapping just be auto mapping. And that's all you need to do. Now you can go over to your pipeline, you can go back to your pipeline, and uh, we can execute this. So we're, we have debug on, so we can run it uh, right from here. But actually, let me go back for a second. Um, so now what we're going to do is let's go through each step and let's do the data preview. Uh, just like the demo had. So we'll start here from the source. The source would give you a snapshot of the data coming from the file itself, unchanged, untransformed. And that looks right. We have the extra columns. We're taking these out. So if we go to the select and we preview here, we should now see just the columns that we want here, which is first, last, gender, location, subscription type. And that was one of the transformed fields that had a different name coming in. And it's exactly what we have. That all looks fine. And then on the sync, so the sync should look exactly the same because when you are in data preview with debug mode in the data flow designer, we're not writing any data. We're just looking at a snapshot of the data in memory in that data frame in Spark at the time when you click the button. Yippers, it all looks exactly like it does here in the tutorial. This is the name change description type. Now they run uh, the <clears throat> uh, their ETL and they put the data into SQL Data Warehouse and then go to SSMS to look at that um, data. They call their data sample table. I call mine radio, but that's fine. We'll go back here. We'll go to the pipeline. Now we can execute this here from the pipeline. And what did I forget to do? Oh, yes. Okay. So important note is that the default for SQL DW <clears throat> as a sync is going to be using polybase, using staging. Uh, this is only a few number of rows, so no need to do that. I'm going to simplify this, and we'll just do direct row by row insert, and that'll be just fine for this demo. So this should take about one minute. Um, so let's go ahead and let that run, and then I'll come back to you in about 50 seconds. And we are back, and one minute later, uh, this completed, so we can go over to our management studio, and we should refresh this and then see a radio table. There it is, and we'll select the rows from it. And there they are. Simple as that. So last thing I'll just show you is that after your run completes, your execution completes, you can then take a look at the execution detail plan of that. So we only had 25 rows. It took five seconds to land those rows. The sync itself, it took nine, almost 10 seconds to um, actually load that data through the driver into SQL DW without using Polybase. We only had one partition because it was a small number of rows. We had five columns updated. And you can see that, uh, for example, the subscription type, you see the lineage of that field that came from the level field. So we show that to you here and get that to you. That's it. So I was able to convert that Scala notebook into a data factory in about 10 minutes. Thanks for watching.